Coming back to politics, and the subject of race, outspoken conservative Anne Coulter has a lot to say about, well, just about everything, in fact. In fact the new subject of her new book is Mugged, Racial Demagoguery from the 70s to Obama. It's dedicated to, quote, the freest black man in America, and we'll discover who that is. Anne Coulter, welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here. I know you've been struggling with a bit of a cold. Yes, you have you've, an unfair advantage tonight. You've been whining about it incessantly <laughs> for the last hour and saying that you think you may die uh, during this interview, which is going to be a huge ratings booster for me. So thank you. I would only not cancel on you. Uh, all day I was lying in bed thinking, I can't cancel this because of a scheduling mishap a year ago. Well, I you, did you, do you a bad no, turn. You, you, as we say in Britain, you bottled it last time. <laughs> you just didn't fancy your chances. <laughs> now, let's, let's turn to race, because very timely, this book, for the discussion today about John Sununu. So there you go, John Sununu. Eleven days ago to the election, up he pops on my show last night, and for reasons that still baffle me, when I asked him a straightforward question, a political question, do you think Colin Powell should stay in the Republican Party if he's going to keep voting for the Democrats, <laughs> which seemed to me, again, as a brick, call me misguided, but a fairly logical question. Off he went on this rant about, well, you know what, mate, it's, uh, there's another reason for all this. Nods, nods, wink, wink, and it's basically because he's black and so is Barack Obama. Put your dispassionate hat on, if you may, for a moment. What did you make of that? Was he just being stupid? Um, I think it's probably not true. There are a lot of Republicans who often vote for the Democrats. In fact, I secretly suspect that John McCain voted for Obama in the last election. Um, but I don't think it's such a terrible thing. I, I, I mean, a lot of Irish Catholics voted for JFK because he was the first Irish Catholic president. I, I mean, I don't think it's a slander upon Colin Powell to say this, though I don't particularly think it's true. I think no, Colin but the, the slander isn't Powell that he voted for Barack Obama. It's no, why, it's because why. he's black. Yeah. I don't think that's such a terrible thing to say. Like I say, lots of Irish Catholics voted for yes. JFK just because he was an Irish Catholic. Right, but Johnson and Newt has assumed that was the motivation behind what Colin Powell has, mm. has done. Colin Powell has never used that as the reason for why he's voted for Obama. Yeah, I he think actually he's probably wrong, he but I just don't think it's such a terrible thing to speculate about. Yes, but if you play the race card in putting into Colin Powell's mouth words he hasn't actually used for his reasoning, that's just playing a race game, isn't it? A rather unpleasant race game. Maybe, but I bet there are a lot of black people who are very proud of having the first black president. I don't hold that but against that's, them. That's totally irrelevant to what I just said. It's not about black people voting for a black president. It's about the motivation of Colin Powell, a four-star retired general, a great well, statesman, making a decision based, as he put it, very clearly, on politics, on foreign policy, on issues. To then have that condensed by John Sununu to, actually, it's just because he's black, and so is Barack Obama. But that's what your question was. I mean, you didn't answer it. You did a Sununu on me. You went off on some weird tangent. I don't think it's that weird a tangent. I don't think it's that slanderous. I also don't think it's true. What isn't true? That it's only because he's black. I think Colin Powell is liberal. <laughs> so is John McCain. Do so you actually agree with me? Well, I agree with the bottom line. I just think it's kind of a tempest in a teapot. If it were the case, if Colin Powell said, I'm voting for him because he's the first black president, I wouldn't think that's outrageous. Is America a more or less racist country since Barack Obama became president? I think it's not a racist country. Um, as I say in the book, I think there are more child molesters than genuine racists in America. I think but do you actually believe that? Um, I can save you a lot of time. <laughs> Anything I say, I actually believe. Do you? <laughs> yes, um, and I think I marshal a fair amount of evidence to demonstrate that. I think more of the problem is the accusations of racism, and that does drive the races apart, because you have white people walking on eggshells, terrified they're going to say some word that's going to be deemed, you know, an incipient clan sentiment and and it, that's why I, the the crux of my book is the turning point at the oj verdict when i think white america saw black people cheering the the acquittal of an obviously guilty black celebrity and said that's it the white guilt bank is shut down not only did that help race relations it specifically helped black people as republican policies that had been pushed for years but demagogued as racist law and order welfare reform we're actually able to be implemented, helping black people most of all. I mean, helping everyone, but helping Giuliani's policies in New York saved tens of thousands of black lives. And I don't know if he would have been able to continue with his very tough on crime policies, which were in fact demagogued as racist while he was implementing them, if you didn't have this change in feeling in America where people were just sick of hearing of being accused of racism. Let's take a little break, now we've warmed you up, because <laughs> you called the president a retard.
this week. <laughs> um, you're laughing. Most people aren't. Let's discuss after the break. I struggled with it myself for a long time, but I came to realize life is that gift from God. And I think even when life begins in that horrible situation of rape, that it is uh, something that God intended to happen. Those are rape comments from Richard Murdoch that sparked a firestorm in election. I'm sure that Anne Coulter has a view on that. What is your view on that? I haven't actually heard a view from you on this yet. <laughs> I think all Republican candidates um, apparently need to go through some sort of cattle prodding to learn to just say exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother. Is that so hard to get out of your mouth? Is that your belief? For the law, yeah. I mean, if you're talking, these guys start to get philosophical, as I'm sure Richard Murdoch was doing mm. there. Um, look, it's one thing if a woman decides to bring a child to term after she's been raped. There are a lot of cases where an abortion would be indicated, um, or you would be sympathetic toward the woman, Tim Tebow, Jack Nicholson, Andrew Breitbart. Thank God their mothers didn't abort them. Yet and still, we're talking about someone running for a position to make laws. And should the state require a woman to carry her rapist child to term? No. And moreover, um, could we keep our eye on the ball here? We live in a country where you can abort a baby up until it's been born alive. When, when Barack Obama was in the Illinois legislature, he required hospitals to, if in a botched abortion, if the baby is inadvertently born alive, for the, the doctors have to go chasing the baby with a fire extinguisher and kill it. That's the world we live in. Can we deal with the two million who aren't a result of rape and incest and, and just have that exception there? Is that such a big problem? And when you're running for office, please stop talking philosophically. The latest poll, USA Today Gallup, says that abortion at 39% is the number one issue for women in 12 swing states. Are you surprised by that? I'm suspicious of that. Um, I understand from, from pollsters that um, a very dangerous way to take a poll is to give people a multiple choice answer because respondents feel like they're taking an IQ test and will check off the one they think there is the correct answer. There is no correct answer and the way you should really ask polls like that um, is to have a fill in the blank question which is why insane things like campaign finance reform would show up very high on polls. I, I simply would you like, would you like Romney if he wins to overturn Roe versus Wade as he has threatened to in the past? <laughs> well, I don't think it's much of a threat. I mean, it seems to me from much of the public dialogue, people seem not to realize that even if Roe is overturned, abortion up until the last minute and even the doctors and nurses chasing the fetus through the hallways will always be legal in New York, Chicago, California. All, Roe is See, when you started your position about, you know, I actually think this guy, Murdoch, is wrong and because he should have... How hard is it to say that actually an exception of rape, incest and so on? I think, oh, well, you're perfectly normal when you speak like that. I get it. You can have that position, and it seems reasonable. Everything else. And then you start going on about babies being carried it's through corridors. It's true. Corners. You're taking it to such a ridiculous extent. I didn't. It was, it, was, it was President Obama taking it to a ridiculous extent. He supports partial birth abortion. That is when the baby is entire, entirely delivered, except for the head. The head is punctured, punctured and the brain suctioned out. That is a brutal sick savage procedure Can, i think we could agree on that i think we could agree on parental notification in a lot of cases um or husband the husband being notified states would be allowed to finally pass their own laws overturning roe v wade is dunkirk it is not day for pro-lifers it just means it goes back to the states and i promise you in the state of new york and the state of california abortion is going to be legal until after the baby is born why did you call president obama a retard um, the reason I, let me preface it with, you're a very intelligent woman, you're very controversial, you're very intelligent, and you would have known absolutely the furore that would have come up from this. Here's the tweet that you tweeted, it was during one of the debates. At the end of the third debate. Right. But when you read that back, you know what you did there, you know it was a deliberately incendiary thing to say. You knew that you were using a word that would be latched on by everyone with a disability in America, as their equivalent of the N-word to black people. I think, why, why did you do it? I think you are doing what you are so testy with Sununu doing to uh, Colin Powell. You are just interpreting and announcing to the world what my motives were. I was sending out I didn't out announce a anyone's tweet. motives Yes, to, you did. You did it when? because you knew it would be incendiary. No, I sent out a tweet that I thought was relevant at the moment. And it was because at the end of the third debate, a lot of right, the, all the chit-chat was... Um, why was Romney so gentle? Why didn't he go after Obama on Benghazi? Why didn't he go after that's Obama fine, on the fine, Benghazi cover-up? But why call the I do president not... of the United States a retard? 
because it's a synonym for loser. And we were spending 10 but seconds on this, or it's going to be another two years before I come on. Because wow, I am yeah, you're threatening angry me. at the word police. I need an Encyclopedia Britannica to see what no, words don't. are appropriate no, and which ones aren't. Okay, explain to me why retard is inappropriate. Because I, I heard you this morning say, look, what if I'd said imbecile, idiot, cretin, or moron? That because, was two nights ago. Right, whatever. Any of those four words, as you know, has not become in the last decade or so a word that is synonymously offensive to people with disability and is used in a offensive way about them by people that I is the do difference do you call people with the, with mental disabilities retards because i don't and i think that's a nasty thing to do a lot of people do to be offensive yes no they don't they do and you they know absolutely that absolutely do not and you know they do it. not of course you, you know do. no one would call a down syndrome child a retard it is synonymous with loser you know perfectly well no but one that's would complete use that nonsense. you know what would have been offensive no, wait a minute Are you that? that is complete nonsense that's the, the whole words, point it, the whole point, if you talk to people who work with Down syndrome, children or whatever, okay, they will all tell you... You're going to the... keep saying that this is offensive and you're just wasting time because we only have 10 more seconds on this. Um, we're getting to the who? next topic because, okay, it's offensive, it's offensive, and you're going to come up with 20 different ways to tell me it's offensive. It's offensive according to whom? Moron, idiot, cretin, uh, cretin um, imbecile. These were exactly like retard, once technical terms to describe people with mental disabilities. Changing the word doesn't change the condition. I was not referring to someone with Down syndrome. I was referring to the President of the United States. I know that. I didn't make a joke about Special Olympics the way the president did. I didn't make a joke about extra chromosome uh, right-wingers the way Al Gore mm. did. Those are specific conditions. I didn't call the president a Down syndrome child. I used the word retard the same way people use idiot, cretin, cr cr um, uh, moron, and the rest of them, which were all once technical terms, and I've had it with the language police, and you were wrong that, oh, no one else is laughing. You... Everyone is fed up with the language police. Actually, they're not, but you wouldn't use the N-word, which you've already said ah! that. Oh, not the n-word argument okay now we are back to my book mugs um no and of course not why, For why, one would, thing, you, the why would you make any like exceptions word. why would you allow the, the word police as you put That's it the, to make any exceptions i should have called my book three books back about um guilty liberal victims and their assault on america everybody wants to be black no unless you went through slavery and went through jim crow i do not want to hear victims bullying the rest of america and this is what has happened whether it's the Jersey Girls or, 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 or the uh, spokesman for the disabled. It's not the disabled. It's the self-appointed spokesman work pol word police. Um, the feminists on this word or that word. The gays on, oh, you can't say, oh, that's so gay. Now, you no, don't use the, the M word, word because you know, you know that it would get you into serious trouble. No, I would never you know, use it. You know that it's deeply offensive. I'm sorry, you're doing what Sununu, you're so upset Sununu did to Colin Powell. You're going to read my mind to tell me why I would use a word or not use a word. No, you're wrong. I wouldn't use the the n-word because it's a curse will you, word. Will you carry on using the word retard? Yeah, I've, you've done it since that tweet. Really? Yeah, of course. Even though, even though you've seen disabled people say, please stop no, using it. No, disabled people are saying it. These spokesmen for no, the no, disabled, disabled people. No, disabled people are. They are. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm sure they were following my Twitter feed. This has nothing to do with disabled people. It was about the president. They have injected themselves into a tweet they have nothing to do with. Oh. No, I would think that um, maybe, maybe Biden should be upset. By, by me calling the president a retard, but not an actually disabled person. Let's take another break. <laughs> Let you calm down a bit. Oh, yeah, I think you could move on to a better subject. It's an interesting subject. No, it isn't. It should be with a guy with beautiful, someone who really cares about and understands women. A guy who cares whether you get health insurance and specifically whether you get birth control. The consequences are huge. My first time voting was amazing. It was this line in the sand. Before I was a girl, now I was a woman. I went to the polling station. I pulled back the curtain. I voted for Barack Obama. The new Lena Dunham ad for President Obama and Coulter is back. I'm sure you loved that, didn't you? Yes, it's it's going to be my exhibit henceforth for um, both of both of the groups I want to take the vote away from, young people and women, all in one combo platter. You would take away the female <laughs> vote, would you? Yes, I've become quite famous for making that point. What is the point? Th that it was a rash experiment and we should reconsider the 19th Amendment. <laughs> you called me in the break a sexist, misogynist pig. Yes. Can you explain why? Yes. What, that... have, I, what have I said that's been remotely sexist? Calm down. 
Oh, if it is the conservative female obligation to, I'm not hyperventilating, I'm disagreeing with you, which apparently is insulting your teeny tiny male ego. It is the most insulting, condescending, sexist thing to say to a female, cons generally conservative, who disagrees with you. No, it's my obligation to back down and accept your point. And if I don't, you're not being calm. But I've never heard you back down or apologize for anything. And I think when you call the President of the United States a retard. Oh, we have moved on from that. Final point on it. <laughs> a little, a little part in your brain cell should go off and say, you know what, Anne, I just overstepped the mark. Yeah, okay, explain to me what it, why that is different, again, from cretin, moron, idiot. For the same reason that the N-word has become completely unacceptable. The N-word has never been anything it, but an epithet. Because of the offense it causes to the black community. No, the N-word, that's argue, like saying the F-word. Let me finish word. my sentence. You can't just say everything is the N-word. Let me finish my sentence. I would oh, argue, calm down, calm down. I would argue the word retard has become equally has become <laughs> no. equally unacceptable no, to people with disability in America. This is what the word police say about any word because it they is the decide one word of all those words, and I got them all out from the dictionary. It's the one word that has been used in it the last decade or so. It is not used decade for decade disabled so, people. As it has. No, it you're so wrong. No, it isn't. And you can't just go around. It isn't a better argument to say, oh, and broad. That's like using the N-word. And illegal immigrant. That's like using the N-word. And uh, gay. That's like using the N-word. All you're doing is making a different argument for the same argument. We are the authoritarian the word police, the and we once. will tell you which words you can use and which words you can't use. Making a joke about Special Olympics is making a joke about something that actually exists. That is what President Obama did. I would not have done that. I would not make a joke about a Down syndrome child. Retard is the same as idiot, cretin, moron. It means loser. That's what it has meant for 30 years, and the word police come in five minutes ago and say, no, we're going to be bossy and tell you what to do. They're the biggest bullies of all these self-appointed victims. Oh my God, you're calling other people bossy. I've heard it all. Let's turn back to Mugged, your book. Excellent. And give me a parallel between the book and the current election and what's going to happen. Who's going to win the election? Um, I think it's going to be Romney. I've thought that since he was the nominee. Um, you didn't want him as nominee, though. No, there was a brief period where, um, as I say, I ran off with the biker, Chris Christie. Yeah. But I came back to the responsible choice, and I think, I mean, the reason I thought, I said two years out, when people were still thinking Sarah Palin might be the nominee, or, you know, Ron Paul, it was a long time out when I said, if we don't run Christie, it'll be Romney and he'll lose. I took that back six months later because Obama's made such a mess of the economy. I travel a lot out in America. Um, and people are really, really hurting. There are a lot of people who are unemployed, underemployed. They know they're not doing what they should be doing. Obamacare is coming down the track like a, like a bullet train. Um, and a lot of people are going to have to go out of business or have already gone out of business. Where do you give Obama credit? Because the most powerful arguments I hear are where a Republican can give the Democratic president some credit and vice versa, where a Democrat can give Mitt Romney some credit. Where do you credit the president? Um, I like the drone attacks. I don't know why liberals like the drone attacks. I mean, if you're going to compare waterboarding a couple of terrorists at Guantanamo three times to attacks on civilian populations to get one or two terrorists, um, I would say that the waterboarding is way better than that. Um, but I think, it, I, I think it's worth getting the terrorists. The only thing you can say positive about Barack Obama I didn't is he's say it was the only thing, attacks. but that's But that's one pretty big thing. Do you think it was right to end the war in Iraq? I know he didn't start that process, but he certainly finished it. To announce a timetable for withdrawing troops from Afghanistan, are you in favor of that? Well, I can't say I'm in favor of the withdrawal since I was against the escalation. I don't know what the point of sending more troops to Afghanistan was other than fulfilling a talking point mm. in, on the campaign trail. In order to bash Iraq, Obama and all Democrats took the position that um, Iraq was the bad war, the war of convenience. Afghanistan, good war, war of necessity. No, it wasn't. All we needed to do was take out the Taliban, leave a few troops behind. Bush had managed the Afghanistan war beautifully. Sending more troops was utterly pointless other than to fulfill a talking point. Iraq is a place where you have a real shot for genuine regime change um, and a genuine democracy in, in that godforsaken area of the world. We won't need an Arab Israel over there. That was Iraq, and I do think we pulled troops out too fast from Iraq and should never have sent more troops to Afghanistan. I say a little break. I've decided to award you one more segment. <laughs> You've been kind of blissfully annoying, so I'm giving you an extra segment. Okay, now we're down to 12 months. <laughs> Now a special bonus segment with Anne Coulter. Lots of tweets pouring in, a lot deeply offensive to both of us, but one here from a Robert Gillian says, 
Here's Morgan. Opposites attract. Do I see love in the air with Anne Coulter? <laughs> I think I speak for both of us when I say, no, Robert, you don't. Um, now, your book is dedicated to the freest black man in America. Yes. Who is that? Yes, well, it's supposed to be a little crackerjack surprise that you have to read the book for, but since this smash bestseller mm. has been out there for four weeks, probably a lot of people already know the answer. It, and if you followed me on Twitter, you'd know, because I came across that it was what Shul Shelby Steele said about Clarence Thomas. And it was such a beautiful quote in such a beautiful interview. I tweeted out a big section of it when I was doing the research for this book. And then at the end, I just thought, that's... That's it. He's the one who, according to Shelby Steele, doesn't play the game, doesn't play it on either sides. He's been such a brave man and such a great Supreme Court justice. And the other great thing about it is a lot of people who have read the book and know what a huge fan I am of Thomas Sowell's have guessed that it's Thomas Sowell. And that would be a very good second choice for a, for a dedication. You see, when I hear you speak again like that, you seem perfectly normal. I can't equate that kind of normality with these outrageous things that you come out with. There's nothing outrageous. There is, though. No, why, there why is do, liberals' do... reaction because liberals love being self-righteous. I'm not a liberal. I'm just a normal guy doing a TV show. You are definitely not normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't, why do you do it? Is it just for commercial gains? Is it a brand thing? Why do you press those little buttons which just I'm go not pressing a little buttons. bit too I far? I speak the way I speak when I am with my friends or anyone else. And, and I make my points in a way that I think will be interesting and, and amuses me. I mean, when you write a book, for example, you have to read it through a, a dozen times, more than that, just, just reading it through to edit and cut things out. If it's not entertaining, it's going to be a long, tough haul. Do, do you like being offensive? Oh, please, I am not offensive. I'll tell you, liberals like being offended is the issue. No, no, a lot of people find you deeply offensive. Oh, they offensive. do not. They do. They love getting on their high you horses. Have you have a lot of fans, too. Obviously, you sell millions of books, but a lot of people find you deeply offensive. Do you mind that? Well, manifestly not. It's kind of a gift. <laughs> a gift to be offensive? Well, no, to annoy liberals, which isn't very hard, by the way. Could you ever date a liberal? Really? Literally. No, and we are not discussing dating. This interview was going so well, you had gotten it down to only 12 months before I come back. But these are your criteria. We are not going into well, dating. That's your criteria for returning. <laughs> I haven't established mine. My criteria is you are banned for 13 months. <laughs> see you next year. Thank you. See you next year. The book is called I Mugged. I am cold. Oh, yeah, let's no, check out. fist bump. God, no. uh, it's called Mugged, Racial Demagoguery from the 70s to Obama, Lover or Hater. And I can't quite work out where I am on that one. Uh, it's certainly a compelling read. Well, and Coulter, liar. See you in 13 months. <laughs> Next, the other side.